Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome guys, the lesson. Okay, before we start, please open your face. Open your camera so I can see your face. Now, 12 students already joined. Still waiting for a couple of minutes. How are you guys? Fine? Fine, fine. Hi. Hi. <coughs> What's going on, Ramadan? Everything is okay? You took a bath, right? Before enter the lesson. Ali, open your camera, please. Again, also. Please open your camera. You're waiting one more minute. Okay. Now we have 15 students already. What fun? Can you open your camera? So, Eric is joining also. Okay. Ryan is coming. Eric, can you open your camera? Eric Ryan, can you open your camera? Okay, 16 students already join. Uh, Deepa, Ilham, Nur Abdi, Abim, Hafiz, Ivan, Fikri, Adi, Demas, Falah, Rian, Eric, Lutfan, Farhan Hafiz, Alif, and Ryan. Agus is coming. Who is not here? Three students. Hafif, 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 two more student. Ramos, Ramos, Hafif, Ramos. One more. Eza, ada kah? Eza, 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 Eza. Eza. Okay, so uh, let's start the lesson. Before we start, let's pray. Pray begin. I mean, please turn off your microphone while you are listening to the lesson. So guys, this is the last lesson for this semester. I hope you enjoy uh, study the chemistry in the second semester, although uh, it is not uh, what uh, perfect because half of the semester uh, we have online learning. As the minister Minister said that uh, in the online learning, maybe we cannot cover all of them. We cannot cover in detail, but uh, the most important thing in the topic, I already gave to you. And today is the last topic that I'm going to give to you. So, uh, officially, it will be finished, the topic. But uh, like I say to you, we cannot uh, see in detail about the topic, but it's now turn in you to study more, to exercise more, to learn more about the detail and feel free when you want to ask something, uh, you can uh, WhatsApp me or text me in the uh, Google Classroom. And as soon as possible, I will answer your question. But I'm sorry, maybe sometime it is uh, let respond because slow respond, yeah, because uh, there are so many things that I have to do in, uh, in the home, so work from home. So uh, maybe sometimes you slow respond, but uh, I'm trying my best to answer all your question as soon as possible. So feel free if you have any question, because we cannot see in detail in the uh, online learning, but uh, you will answer the question according to the uh, concept that I gave to you. 
and you will elaborate yourself by doing exercises and of course you will have many questions okay so especially before the final task uh, i'm uh, waiting for your uh, question maybe also we can do an extra lesson for this it's up to you uh, yani if you want extra lesson i can give you extra lesson by, the, by doing this online learning also okay so today is the last lesson that we are going to cover the last topic in uh, 10th grade for chemistry and it's the, also the last topic for this semester and you're going to see after this final test hopefully you're going to do well in your final test okay now uh, 18 student already uh, Ramos is already joining so Eza and Afif not here maybe they have problem with the connection okay no problem okay now let's start the lesson I'm going to share my screen and we are going to start the lesson Eza is coming thank you Eza okay Okay, this is the screen that I'm going to share you. Okay, I have to find the uh, topic. This is we see last lesson. Yes, so our topic today is about the limiting reagent. Okay, limiting reagent is one of the most famous concept in a mall. So this is also very important. So please understand well the limiting reagent, the limiting reagent concept. So it will not be a big problem for you. If you know already the concept, it will be very, very, very easy things. So the most important is you get the concept and after that you will do exercises. Okay, so listen very well about the concept. So what is limiting reagent? In limiting reagent, there are two important things we call as a limiting reactant and excess reactant. We know reactant, right? Reactant is the substance that we put at the beginning before the reaction. If the reactant is reacted, then I will, we will produce a product. Okay. In writing a chemical reaction, reactant is always in the left side and product in the right side. So that's why we have reactant and we have product. We are going to focus now in the reactant. In the reactant, sometimes we have a limiting reactant and sometimes we have an excess reactant. So what does it mean, limiting reactant and excess reactant? In uh, some of the reaction, the reactant is exactly react with another reactant and to produce a product. For example, if I'm reacting A plus B, then we are producing C plus D, then A plus B, if we are looking at the coefficient, one mole of A will react with two, uh, one mole of B. One mole of A will react with one mole of B. So it is exactly reacted without excess and without limit. But if I have the uh, coefficient one and one in the reactant, but in reality, we have one mole of A react with two mole of B. So at that time, B will be excess because not all the B will be reacting. Because according to the coefficient, only one mole of A will react with one mole of B, okay? So if I have one mole of A with two mole of B, so the B will be excess. So that's why the excess one we call as a limit, uh, the excess reactant. And the one which is not excess, the one which is not excess, we call as a limiting reactant. If I want to make an analogy, it is like this. For example, imagine that you will make a sandwich, okay? Imagine that you will make a sandwich from bread and egg. Okay, you will make a sandwich from bread and egg. 
To make one sandwich, you need one bread and one egg. Okay. To make a sandwich, you need one bread and one egg. If I have four bread and five egg, if I have four bread and five egg, how many sandwich that I can make? Four. If I have four bread. And five egg. How many sandwiches that that I can make? How many sandwiches? Four, four sandwiches. Four. Four. It is all used to make a sandwich. It's all the bread and all the egg is used to make a sandwich. No, right? Because yeah, the number of egg is more. We have five egg, but I'm using only four, four egg. So. The egg will be excess. Excess. The egg will be excess, and the bread will be limit reaction. Limit. Limit reaction. So it is the same in the chemical reaction. This is the same. If you have two reactant, not all the reactant will react together, finish all of them. No, in reality, one of the reactant will be limited and it will be finished in the reaction and one of the reactant will be excess. So this is what we call as a limiting reagent. So the limiting reagent is the reactant that can have the limit and also the excess. If there is a limit, then there will be also an excess. Okay, like in the sandwich example, if I have four bread and four egg, it's easy, I'm going to uh, have for a sandwich, but always not like that. Okay, not always exactly uh, the same the number of egg and the number of bread. Sometimes we have less bread, sometimes we have less egg. So you have to calculate how many sandwich that we can uh, you uh, we can make from number of bread and number of egg. It is the same in the reaction. We will uh, find what is the product of the uh, reaction by looking at how many reactant, how many limiting reactant, and how many excess reactant. Okay, maybe it will be easier for, for you to understand by using the example. For example, like this. This is the example, and I am going to show you the way how to solve a kind of limiting reagent problems, okay? For example, by using H gram for each calcium and bromine, how many gram of calcium bromide is possible to be produced? In here, I have calcium and bromine. I'm going to write the reaction. This is the reaction. Calcium plus bromine producing calcium bromide. And uh, we balance the reaction. It's already balanced. One calcium, one bromine, and one calcium bromide. And it is given the mass, H gram for each calcium and bromine. H gram of calcium and H gram of bromine. The question is, how many calcium bromide will be produced? How many gram of calcium bromide will be produced? Okay, to answer this question, you have to find first the mole. Okay, we are going to make this kind of uh, table, this kind of table, it's containing initial change and final so to uh, solve the problem of limiting reagent you're going to use this table initial change and final you're going to write ecf or initial changing final this one uh, assume that this is still uh, nothing here okay so what should we do first we are going to find the mole of the given the given is calcium and bromine each of them is H gram, so I'm going to find the mole of calcium and the mole of bromine. The mole of calcium will be 8 over 40 because 40 is the relative atomic mass of calcium and it's equal to 0 0.2 mole. The mole of bromine is 8 over 160, it is equal to 0 0.05 mole. So I found the mole of calcium and bromine. Where I'm going to put this? I'm going to put this in the initial part. Okay, I'm going to put this in the initial part. So I'm going to put here 0 0.2 mole for calcium and 0 0.05 mole of bromine. So here in the initial part. 
How about calcium bromide? At the beginning, there is no calcium bromide. Because at the beginning, there, there is no product. The, the product is not produced yet. So that's why in initial, initial product will always be zero. So this strip mean it is zero. Okay, this strip mean it is not, mean it doesn't mean minus yeah. This strip it is not produced yet. It's mean so nothing here. So initially, what you're going to write is only the reactant, 0 0.2 mole of calcium, 0 0.05 mole of bromine from the reaction that is uh, given. After you know the initial, how to write this number, the changing, the number in changing. To write this number of changing, first you have to know which one is the limiting reagent, which one is the limiting reactant. Like the example of sandwich and uh, the example of bread and egg, you have to know which one is the limiting. In the sandwich example, uh, bread is the limiting because I have only four bread. Okay, so in here also, you have to know which one is the limiting calcium or bromine. How to find the limiting one? It is very easy. If I have one mole of calcium, then I will react one mole of bromine. Okay, if I have one mole of calcium, then I'm going to react one, one mole of bromine. But now I'm, I don't have one mole of calcium and one mole of bromine, but I have 0 0.2 mole of calcium and 0 0.05 mole of bromine. What do you think? Which one is the limiting reagent? Bromine. Bromine. Bromine will be the limiting one because bromine is less than the calcium. Bromine only 0 0.05, calcium is 0 0.2. Of two. course, the bromine two. will be the limiting. But guys, this one is easy to find the limiting one because the coefficient is one and one. So the, rea the ratio of the reaction is one to one. If the ratio of the reaction is one to one, it's easy. But if the ratio is not one to one, then maybe you will be confused which one will be the limiting one. So I have easiest way to find the limiting one if the coefficient is not one to one. What is the easiest way? The easiest way is you will divide the mole number of initial, the mole number of initial with the coefficient for each of the reactant. You will divide the number of initial with the mole number of initial to the coefficient for each of the reactants. And then after that, you're going to compare the result. You are going to compare the result of the division. You divide the mole of the initial to the coefficient, and then you will compare the result. The one which has lower result, it will be the limiting one. The one which has lower result will be the limiting one. For example, uh, I'm going to uh, apply in this reaction. I'm going to divide 0 0.2 by 1. The result is 0 0.2. 0 0.05 by 1 is 0 0.05. Which one is smaller, 0 0.2 or 0 0.05? 0 0.05 is smaller. That's why the limiting one is 0 0.05 or the bromine is the limiting reactant. Okay, it is clear how to find the limiting reactant? Clear? First, you have to clear. choose the limiting reactant. Just you will divide the mole, the initial mole, with the coefficient and compare it. Compare which one is lower, that one will be the limiting. Okay? Clear? Yeah. Okay. After you know the limiting, now it is the changing part. After you know the limiting, and it is easy to write the changing part. What you have to write in changing part, first you are going to write the symbol. The reactant will always be minus and the product will be plus. Reactant minus, the product plus. Okay. What I'm going to write first. What I'm going to write first is the limiting one. Okay, I predict the limiting by dividing 0 0.21 and 0 0.05 by 1. 
and I found that bromine is the limiting. If I know bromine is the limiting, then the change of bromine will be the same like the initial. If the initial is 0 0.05, then the change will be 0 0.05 also. But now the symbol will be minus. Why? Because when I add this one, then I will get zero. Zero means there is no excess. It means that it is a limiting. So that's why the first number that I'm going to write in changing is this number, 0 0.05 in the bromine. How I can get this 0 0.05 in the calcium and 0 0.05 in calcium bromide? This number I got from the ratio of the coefficient. Look at this. In here it's easy because the coefficient ratio is the same. 1, 1, 1. So if it is 1, 1, 1, if here 0 0.05, here also will be 0 0.05, and here also will be 0 0.05, because the coefficient is the same, 1, 1, 1. Now, guys, if I'm changing the coefficient, for example, if calcium is coefficient is 2, so what will be the changing number here? If calcium coefficient is 2, what will be the changing in here? Zero point zero twenty-five. Zero point zero twenty-five. No. Zero point zero. This is zero point zero one. Two five. times this one. Bromine, isn't it? If calcium is two here, bromine is one. So the ratio is one to two. If it is zero point zero five here, then here will be zero point zero one, isn't it? If Calcium bromide 3 here. What will be the number in changing? Yes? If calcium bromide here, the coefficient is 3, what will be the number in changing? Zero point fifteen. Zero point fifteen. Three times the uh, bromine, isn't it? Good. So the changing part here is the same like the coefficient, the same the, ra the same ratio as the coefficient. You will put it in a changing part. So the changing part will be the same ratio as the coefficient. Okay. Now, after you know the changing part, the last part is the final one. The final one is easy. Just you will sum up the number. For example, in calcium, I'm going to sum 0 0.2 plus minus 0 0.05, so I'll get 0 0.15. For bromine, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.05, it is 0. For calcium bromide, as we have only 0 0.05, so totally 0 0.05 more. So this is the final one. So this mole of the final one will be used to answer the question. <clears throat> For example here, what is the question? How many grams of calcium bromide is possible to be produced? So calcium bromide is the equation. So I'm going to use this mole, 0 0.05 mole, to find the mass of the calcium bromide produce. So to find the mass, we know that we are going to use the molar mass first. So you will find the molar mass of calcium bromide. It is 200 gram per mole. Then the mass of calcium bromide will be mole times molar mass, 0 0.05 times 200, and it is 10 gram. So this is the answer. Do you have any question, guys? about the limiting reagent problem like this. How to solve this? Any question? Everything is clear? Yes? Is everything is clear? Sir? Yeah? Uh, where, where we get 0 0.05? Which one? This or this? No, yeah. yes. This one? Yes. This one, how do you get 0 0.05? I told you that first you have to know which one is the limiting. First you have to choose which one is the limiting. Which one is the limiting here in this example? Agus, which one is the limiting? Uh, 0 
yes, bromine, right? The limiting 0.05. That's why you have to put also 0.05 here to make it zero. Limiting is always zero at the end. Okay. So if we hear the bromine is 0.06, then here will be 0.06. Okay. Clear? Clear. Okay. Any other question? If the limiting if the limiting is calcium, then the number of calcium will be here, the changing. Okay. So the changing part is first you have to find the limiting one. If you know the limiting, then put that number in the changing part and find the other by using the ratio of the coefficient. Okay. Let's see another question example. For example, this. Can you write the equation first? Write the equation in your notebook before we solve this. Finish. 96 grams for each gases, hydrogen and oxygen are burned with a spark as follow. The reaction is given. You have to balance the reaction first, but it's already balanced. How many grams of water is formed? Which one is the excess reactant and how many grams of it will remain unreacted? So what should you do first to solve this problem? We are going to find the mole of it's hydrogen and substance. oxygen, right? Oxygen. We're going to find the mole of hydrogen and oxygen. Can you find oxygen. the mole of hydrogen and oxygen? Yes, what is the mole of hydrogen? 48. 48. What is the mole of oxygen? <coughs> 3. 3. 48 and 3. Good. After that, what you will do? Initial, change, final. Can you do that? Initial, change, and final. The number in initial first, hydrogen and oxygen. And after that, Find the limiting. Which one is the limiting? Oxygen. Oxygen. Oxygen is the limiting. Oxygen. So, if oxygen is the limiting, then the changing part is you put three in the oxygen, isn't it? Mm. Hydrogen. Then, what will be the changing in the hydrogen? Will be um, become two six. Times. Two yeah. times, right? Because the coefficient is one, two. So two. if oxygen is three minus three, then the hydrogen will be minus six. And water will be plus, plus, six. plus six. Good. Everybody understand this. Okay. Now the final will be 42, zero, six, isn't it? Okay. Now let's back to the question. What was the question? How many gram of water is formed? How many gram of water? <laughs> yes, anyone can find how many gram of water? Yes, what's the answer? <laughs> huh? Six times? <laughs> How many gram of water? water? Six times 18. Because? 18. Yes, 108 gram per mole. Uh, 100 gram. 108 gram for the water. Yeah? Which one is the excess reactant? Which one is the excess? 
oksigen. Hydrogen. 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 The excess get and how many gram of the hydrogen will be unreacted? How many gram of hydrogen will be excess or unreacted? How many gram? Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Good. Forty-two times two. It is equal to eighty-four gram of hydrogen. Good. Thank you. Another question. Everybody, can you solve this problem? Seven gram of sample of ammonia is mixed with sixteen gram of oxygen. According to the reaction below, which is the limiting reactant and how much excess reactant remain after the reaction has stopped? Nitrogen relative atomic mass is 14. Okay, what should you do first? Find the mole of ammonia and, ammonia and oxygen. Oxygen, good. Find the mole first. Ammonia and oxygen. What is the mole of ammonia? Seventeen. More. One more. One more. One more. One more. Oxygen. One more. One. Oxygen. Mm. Zero point five. Zero point five. So what? What? Which one is the limiting? The oxygen. The oxygen. Yes. Yeah. Oxygen is the limiting. Good. So, uh, how much excess of ammonia? If oxygen is limiting, then ammonia mm. will be excess. How much? How much? How many mole? How many mole, mole of ammonia will be excess? Two mole. Two sure? mole. Mm. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to mole because initially it's only one mm. mole. So it must be less than one mole. Mm. Sure. What is the excess mole of ammonia? In the change, zero point zero point two more. Zero point two more. Are you sure? In the change, zero point eight. In the change, zero point six. Zero point six. Good. Who got zero point six? The answer is zero point six. Okay. How to find this in the excess? Uh, in the changing part, oxygen is zero point five, isn't it? In the changing part, oxygen is minus zero point five. Setuju? Isn't it? In the changing part, changing part, oxygen is minus 0 0.5. Then ammonia will be minus 0. Point If oxygen in changing part 0 0.5, ammonia in changing minus 0. Point Four. 4. Because the Coefficient is 5 to 4. 5 to 4. If oxygen is 0 0.5 in the changing part, then ammonia will be 0 0.4 in changing part. So what is the remaining of ammonia? 1 minus 0 0.4 oh. equal to 0 0.6 mol. Good. Okay, guys, this is the last topic of this semester. Person yield. Okay, we uh, finished the limiting reagent. Now the person yield is the last topic. It is very easy. Person yield is only uh, how many percent of the uh, yield. Yield mean result. Of course, when you are doing a uh, experiment, theoretical result with the practical result will be different. So how many percent of the result you got it will be very easy. If you know the practical amount divided by theoretical amount, you will get a time 100%, then you will get the person yield. Okay? So for example, if I have, uh, if I'm reacting C6S12, 
in the reaction predicted or the theoretical uh, amount is 21 gram but in actual amount in actual amount after the uh, practical you did it is only 3.8 gram so what will be the uh, person yield it's very easy the practical amount divided by theoretical amount time 100 percent then you will get uh, the uh, person yield. So in this question, 3.8 divided by 21 times 100, then you will get 18%. Okay? Okay, we can do also this one. Uh, I'm reacting potassium chloride producing oxygen gas if I'm reacting 2.45 gram potassium chloride, I'm uh, obtaining 0 0.8 gram of oxygen gas. How many, how many percent is the yield? It is the practical, yeah, the practical 2.45 producing only 0 0.8 gram. So it is like this. First, find the mole of uh, potassium chloride and mole of oxygen according to the theory Two mole of potassium chloride will produce three mole of oxygen. Two mole of potassium chloride, three mole of oxygen. In the reaction, I'm using 0 0.02 mole of potassium chloride. 0 0.02 mole of potassium chloride. Then how many mole of oxygen must be according to the theory? According to theory, I'm uh, calculating like this, like we did yesterday. The ratio we did like ye yesterday. 2 mole of this producing 3 mole of oxygen. If 0 0.02 mole of potassium chloride, how many mole of oxygen? It will be 0 0.03. Okay, 0 0.02 times 3 divided by 2, then you will get 0 0.03 mole of oxygen. This is a theoretical result, but in practical, we have only 0 0.025 mole of oxygen. So what will be the person yield? The person yield will be 0 0.025. This is the practical amount divided by the uh, theoretical amount 0 0.03 times 100 you get 83%. So person yield is only you will divide the theory uh, sorry you will divide the practical with the theory time 100%. That's enough. Okay, we have only one minute. Uh, I think that's enough. This is the last topic that I'm going to uh, tell you today. And uh, tomorrow, uh, today or tomorrow, I'm going to give you the pointers for the final task. And please check your Google Classroom. I hope you will uh, do better or do your best in the final task and you will get good score. And don't hesitate to WhatsApp me to ask me a question. That's not for today. Thank you. See you in the final test. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.